Shabbata, shalom. Shabbata, shalom. Greetings, everyone, brothers and sisters of Israel and the Gentiles. Hope all is well on this Shabbata day. Hope you're enjoying it. As we are, we give our praise to Ahaya, Ashre Ahaya, yeah. and Yache, Mashiaka. Yes, indeed. Savior of all the world. We are gathered here today to further discuss the covenants given to Abraham. Hope it's been very informative thus far and today we're specifying on the covenant of the land of Canaan that's given to the Israelites, but it's to the Israelites that are in the Ache Meshiach that have his spirit in them that will receive the land. For all the promises were given by the mouth of Ahaya and his words are spirit and they are life. Therefore, those who partake in these promises must partake in the spirit of life. May Ahaya be magnified. Yes. So, we can pick up here in Genesis chapter 15, verse 13 and 14, please. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. We know from uh, reviewing the four hundred year prophecy in the previous video on the overview of the promises and covenants to Abraham that this four hundred year prophecy has started with Isaac and it was fulfilled at that time with the tribes of Israel coming out of Egypt under Moses in Exodus chapter 12, all right? So we're seeing that this affliction is going to happen to the sea, all right, continue. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward shall they come out with great substance. And this had happened because the Israelites came out with great physical substance at that time, right? Now, we can understand that the promise was to the true Israelites, even then, because not all the Israelites left the land of Egypt, even at that time. If we look in the book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 6, it is understood that not everyone that is an Israelite by blood and lineage is an actual Israelite indeed. As Paul says in Romans 9 and 6, yeah. Not as though the word of Elohim had taken none effect. For they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. You can look in the history and see what he means here, that not all Israel are of Israel. Because we had talked about in the lessons prior how Israel, that name is a spiritual name. And we have to be connected to the actual spirit of Yahche to actually be Israelites. Because Elohim is a spirit. And he seeketh such to worship him in spirit and truth. We look in Jasha chapter 80, verse 36 to 39. This is the wonderful thing about having our records back, that we get to look and further understand what transpired in history, so we can understand what is also going to come to pass at this time. Joshua 8 and 36. Yes, because when the plague of darkness happened, as you know, or if you don't know, we encourage you to read the book of Exodus and read about the different plagues that happened. The second to last plague was the darkness upon the land for three days. And then after that, there was the firstborn that got killed and then they let us go. During that darkness of three days, the wicked Israelites actually got killed off at that time. This was something that was not known when you just read the Bible. But it helps us understand that you have to actually be a believer 
in order to partake in these promises. And we there's a lesson on what does it mean to be a believer as well that we encourage you to watch to get good understanding of what being a believer is. So we look here at Joshua chapter 80 verse 36 to 39. Joshua chapter 80 verse 36. And Abraham sent darkness upon Egypt, that the whole land of Egypt and Pathros became dark for three days, so that a man could not see his hand when he lifted it to his mouth. At that time died many of the people of Israelah who had rebelled against Ahia, and who would not hearken unto Musa and Aaron, and believed not in them that Allah had sent them. Wow. So we see even at that time unbelief was a struggle for our people. And we thank Ahia for the testimony so that we can understand that we need not to abide in unbelief this day. Yes, indeed. And we need to trust that Ahia, Ashri Ahia. He is Allah and Yache, whom he sent, he is our deliverer, the root and the offspring of Jesse, the son of Dewed in the flesh, and the son of Allah according to the spirit of holiness, mm-hmm. that we have evidence of by the resurrection of the dead. So we know that we are and will be delivered through them. And those of the Gentiles as well will be delivered from the destruction to come. And they may partake in the faith of faithful Abraham through Yahche Mashiach. Alright? And who has said, We will not go forth from Egypt, lest we perish with hunger in a desolate wilderness. And this is also happening now today because Egypt today is America. Spiritual Sodom and Egypt. And Ahaya calls for the Israelites and you Gentiles who know Ahaya come out of Babylon, come out of America and partake not in our place. But even today, uh, people are afraid to leave. People have no faith. Afraid to leave their comfort zone. The same way these Israelites here were afraid to leave Egypt where they were comfortable. Continue. And who had said, we will not go forth from Egypt, lest we perish with hunger in the desolate wilderness? And who would not hearken to the voice of Mushi? And Ahia plagued them in the three days of darkness, and the Israelites buried them in those days, without the Egyptians knowing of them or rejoicing over them. So there we see that not all the Israelites left Egypt at that time. To help us understand that you have to be in Mashiach, you have to be a believer to partake in these promises. And also for these times to come, take heed that these Israelites died because they believed not in the witnesses that Allah has sent to them. Even as here in these end times, the two witnesses will be sent, Yacha giving them power. And the children of Israel, unfortunately, will seek to make the two witnesses of none effect, causing many people to fall away by not believing Yache and the two witnesses that he sent to witness of him. So it's important in these end times to understand how to identify who's walking in the spirit to make sure we're following the right people. That's going to help us bring forth fruits of the spirit. For edification on the two witnesses, you can also visit those lessons as well in the Understanding of the End Times playlist. And continuing on, let's go back to Genesis chapter 15. Um, we are read up to verse 14. Mm-hmm. Let's jump to verse 18, please. In the same day, Ahiah made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land. Mm-hmm. From the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. And this is where we can understand that we have to be in Yachi because he said unto thy seed, and unto thy seeds, which is Yachi, as Paul edified us on in Galatians chapter 3, verse 16. Galatians chapter 3, verse 16. Now to Abraham. And his seed were the promises made. He saith not to seeds 
as a many, but as a one, and to thy seed, which is Messiah. We're going to go through scripture, through precepts, we get understanding, and therefore we can know and be assured that it is those who are in Messiah who are partaking this promise. And the Israelites who are dwelling in the land will bear his name and his spirit in them. As we can look in Romans chapter 9, verse 3 to 6. Romans chapter 9, verse 3. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Messiah for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh. And Paul was, you can understand, Paul was very stressed about it because the reality is not all Israel will be saved. A lot of our people are going to pass through unbelief. Right? Who are Israelites? To whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenant and the giving of the law and the service of Elohim and the promises. All of these things that pertain to us are by the effectual workings of the spirit of Mashiach in us. Continue. Whose are the fathers? And as we see, the promises belong to our fathers and our fathers have Mashiach in them. <laughs> and of whom have confirmed in the flesh Mashiach came? And the of course, he is our brother. He came literally from the loins of our family, That's right. of the seed of David, by Joseph, his father in the flesh, and Mary, his mother in the flesh. And the Israelites, everybody in that time understood that he was from Joseph, according to the flesh, because you have uh, Philip, when he went to Nathaniel in John 1 and 45, he told him straightly, I found him who Moses and the prophets have written of, Yahweh of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. So it was something very much understood that has been tainted uh, to our times. For further edification on the nativity of Christ, please visit the playlist called The Virgin Birth. We'll continue. Who is over all, Allah I am blessed forever. Yamena. Yamena, all right. Not as though the word of Allah I am has taken none effect. Now notice, this is in the days of Paul. The Israelites had already went into Canaan, and they had been there, we got carried off into different captivities. But now he's telling, because he understands that this prophecy wasn't done at that time. This prophecy is manifold. It isn't complete yet. It happened at that time for physical evidence that Allah will do what he said he would do. And it's coming again in the end of the world. This is why Paul is saying, not as though Allah's promise has taken none effect. In the promises, we're supposed to inherit the land, but here we are, not in the land. Right. And at that <laughs> time, the northern kingdom was already scattered abroad. Right. And the Romans ruled over us in Judea. Right. So we didn't have the land like we were supposed to be at that time. Because right. our deliverer was supposed to reconcile the kingdom unto us under his dominion. That's right. That's why the apostles in Acts chapter 1 verse 6 were saying, are you going to, you know, restore the government, the kingdom unto mm -hmm. Israel at this time? Right. They were getting ruled. Right. So everybody knew what we were looking forward to. So that's why Paul is saying not that they've taken none effect. It's just that not all Israel is of Israel. That's right. Because only the pure seed can inherit the promises. Only the pure seed can inherit the promises. Mm -hmm. All right. And we look at Romans 8 verse 9 and then jump to verse 12. Okay. So we, understand we have to have that spirit in us to be heirs of these promises. Oh, Romans chapter 8 verse 9. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of Allah dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Messiah, he is none of his. If we have not that spirit, we are not partaking in anything. In verse 12. Yes, please. In Romans 8 and 12. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. So we're not debtors to live after our own ways. And all the lusts of the flesh mentioned in Galatians 5, verse 19 to 21. Mm -hmm. The evil spirits of, you can read about in Hermes, parable 9, chapter 15. And all evil works. And pride, lust, the pride of life, the vanity of this world, all these deeds of the flesh, we're not debtors to these things. Because these are the words that we perish in. What does it continue to say? For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. 
But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. And that's what we must do. We must mortify those works and be done with them and not meddle with them. That's right. That we may partake in that Spirit. And we see that it's through the Spirit. That's why we have to have Mishyaka Yache in us. That's right. Because it's only Him that can deliver us from all the temptations to come. And even the temptations that now are. The war that's in our members that we're fighting against to overcome the former man that we were and put off the old man that we may put on the new. All right, continue. For as many as are led by the spirit of Elohim, they are the sons of Elohim. Now we see how we become children by that spirit. Continue. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Mm. So that's not the spirit we're in anymore where we're, we're subjugated to all our lusts and all the, the habits that we have, which are really evil spirits that have dominion over us. Right. We're free from those by Mishiach's blood purging our conscience from dead works that we may live unto Allah to work and which is good and pleasing unto him. Mm -hmm. Continue. But ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. And we know that it's Yahweh because Ahaya is his father. That's right. And by his spirit in us, we may now truly cry unto him in sincerity because we're now doing it according to the spirit. And our works are according to the spirit. And we thank Ahaya. That's for Jew and Gentile. Yes, it is. Because he's the Alahim of the Gentiles too. Continue. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of Elohim. Right. And if children then heirs, now we see how we become heirs. Continue. Heirs of Elohim and joint heirs with Messiah. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Then we see that glory that's to come in that kingdom. We have to suffer with him to partake in it. Yes. And he suffered death on the cross and persecution from all men that believe not. And we are to partake in the same. And we may suffer to overcome what we were, overcome the evil person that we had been all our lives, yeah. being dead to sin that we live no longer therein. And that circumcision, by believing in him, he, he gives us a heart of flesh that we may be dead to that body of sin. That's what Paul was speaking about in Colossians 2 and 11. Yeah. Please. And whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made with our hands, and putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Messiah. And we see we're dead to it. And that helps us understand what being a true Israelite is. As Paul tells us in Romans chapter 2 verse 28. Romans chapter 2 verse 28. For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, Neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh, but he is the Jew which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter. And there we see it, which is of the heart in the spirit, that shows we put off the body of sin. Right. That's the true circumcision because the letter, which is animal sacrifice, could never purge sins. Right. As we read in Hebrews chapter not, 10 verse 1 and 2, right. In chapter 9, verse 9 to 14, right. it can never purge sin. So that letter of the law, that's why he said in Corinthians 3 and 6, for the letter kill it. That's right. And the spirit give it life. Because that eternal spirit that made that blood atonement, that was actually able to purge our conscience to put away the dead works. The work that which is good and pleasing unto our higher. So now we continue there. Yeah. Whose praise is not of men, but of Elohim. And there we see Elohim is a spirit and seeketh such that worship him in spirit and, and in truth. truth. That's, right. That's why the praise is of Elohim. Because right. the men, so unfortunately, when you seek to serve Elohim, the world is going to condemn you. That's right. And that's why we do not seek the praise of men, but we seek the praise of Elohim to do that which is good and right in his sight. That he may be pleased with us because yeah. he is the judge. And if you go to Galatians chapter 3, verse 29, for the Israelites, this helps us understand, just building on understanding what it takes to be a true Israelite, to truly be the children of Abraham. Because Abraham, our father, had no pleasure in iniquity That's right. at all. Galatians chapter 3, verse 29. 
And if ye be Messiah, if you have that spirit in you, if you belong to him, his servant, right? Then ye are Abraham's seed. That's right. And heirs according to the promise. And Paul was attesting to what it means to be a true Israelite in Galatians. Because we talked about how our praise is not of men, but of Allah Hayyam. So we see that this is talking about being spiritually children of Allah Hayyam. And at the time, in the days of Paul, there were Jews who were trying to subvert the believers to think they had to be circumcised to be saved, which salvation was in belief in the name of Yahche and working the works of Allah Hayyam. Because being a believer means you keep the commandments, Bear the fruits of the Spirit and believe in Yahweh, as we had talked about in the video. What is it to be a believer? Yeah. And in Galatians, Paul is clarifying that the people wanted to get them circumcised just so they can glory in their flesh and say they got them circumcised. Not that they really cared about them being saved. And also because they didn't want to make the effort to actually bear the fruits of the Spirit. So they rather subvert the hearers and bring them back to the carnal aspect of things so that they themselves don't have to focus on the spiritual aspect. We can read about this here in Galatians 6, 12 to 16. Galatians chapter 6, verse 12. As many as desire to make a fair show in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised. Notice they want the praise of men. That's right. All right, continue. Only least. They should suffer persecution for the cross of Messiah. <laughs> so they only do it because they don't want to partake in his affliction. That's right. Because if they get you to subvert, then it justifies them that they don't have to go and do the righteousness of bearing the fruits of the Spirit. Right. They want to stay right where they're at. Right. The and same way. So we're keeping the law. Right. right. This ain't, nothing has changed. People are going to try to subvert you to this day. Because if you change, that means they have to change. That's right. <laughs> Right, continue. But neither they themselves who are <laughs> circumcised keep the law. See, <laughs> they, don't, they don't want you to keep the law, truly. And this is how you can also confirm that circumcision and the law are two different things here. That's right. Because the law is the commandments. Circumcision, circumcision. So you can understand Paul is talking about multiple things at once. He was very learned. And we have to be very submissive to the obedience of Mishyaka to understand his writings. Continue. But desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. So they just want to be able to tell people that they converted you. Today right. that would be they want to just be able to tell people that they baptized you or so on and so forth or that you're their disciple or something along those lines. But they just want to glory in you but not see Mishiaka be formed in you. Right. Continue. But Elohim forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Adonai Yadshei HaMashiach. Allah I forbid that we should glory. That's right. There's no glory in our flesh. We are Israelites. We are circumcised, but that's not our glory. Right. Our glory is in the cross of Mashiach, in the blood of Mashiach, in the atonement that has renewed us to be able to work all righteousness by him working in us. This is our rejoicing. As Paul said in the Philippians 3 and 3, that we are the circumcision that worship Allah in the spirit and rejoice in Yahweh Mishiaka. Because he is, our, he is our rejoice and we understand, thankfully, through Ahaya's mercy to make us understand that he's the only reason we're here. He's the only reason we have this opportunity. And only through him can we partake in anything that was given to our fathers. When you understand how much Yahweh means, it's... <laughs> Truly, that's where our rejoicing lies. Because right. it's all about him, the great king, whom I have love. Let's continue there. By whom the world is crucified unto me. Mm, that shows no more sinning. No more partaking in the customs of the world. That's right. Now we find out who's working in us. We're done with the world. That's right. We have no partaking in the worldly feast, the worldly ways, the worldly customs, the worldly dealings, we put them all aside. And this is for Jew and Gentile, though we're, this is talking about the Jews here, right. but Gentiles also understand, put away those ways of the world as well. 
because your fathers inherited lies just as our fathers began to partake in the lies and taught us lies in our generation. So it's for all of us to separate ourselves from the world as Yache is separate from the world and to be encouraged to do it because he overcame the world already and we may overcome in him. Yeah. And I unto the world for in Messiah Yache neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision but a new creature. And they avail nothing because both it's all physical. Whether you're circumcised is physical or uncircumcised. Right. But what actually does have power is becoming a new creature, right. which is the spirit of Allah Hayam in you that maketh you new, which is Mishyakayach, subduing the old man and destroying his works and making you a new creature in Yache, and you will partake in his holiness. This is what Paul was explaining to the Israelites that were being told they had to be circumcised to be saved. And the Gentiles are there listening and hearing so that they may have faith as well in the circumcision of the heart and not think that they are not able to partake in the promises and that they will partake in eternal life. Continue. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace, be unto them. See, as many as walk according to the rule, not trusting in the flesh, but trusting in the spirit and becoming a new creature, they will have peace. Because we now have peace with Allah through Yahshem Mishiach, as Romans 5 and 1 say. Because the peace, that means they're believing in that blood. And they have that atonement to give them peace. They will no longer be enemies. Continue. And mercy and upon the Itariyala of Allah There we see that as many as walk according to this rule peace be upon them and mercy because now we have mercy for all our former sins that great grace that he talks about in romans chapter 5 for the multitude of transgressions now we have that abundance of mercy for the former sins to be put away and now if we understand who that mercy is actually upon for, right it's for the israel of, of Allah. Allah. The spiritual Israelites. That's right. The Israelites in spirit and truth that that mercy is for. That's right. This is amazing what he was talking about to know who that remnant. And this is for the remnant because we understood that it wasn't going to be much. And we have out of Yahshua's mouth himself, he testified of true Israelites in John chapter 1, verse 47. Yahshua saw Nathaniel coming to him and saith of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. And then so he said, True Israelite, no guile, no malice. And that's, of course, that's by the Spirit. That's right. So we understand what true Israelite is. And there were also the, the opposite, which thought they were Israelite, but were actually children of the devil. In uh, John chapter 8, verse 39. Go probably from verse 37. Okay. So we hear what Yahshua was telling them. Because these are, they believe they're Israelites. They believe they're partaking in the promises of Abraham. They believe they're counted for the seed. But you have to actually do the works. Because remember, show, you show me your works and I show you my faith by my works. That's right. As James talked about in James chapter 2. Continue. Uh, John chapter 8 verse 37. I know that ye are Abraham's seed. But ye seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father. And ye do that which ye have seen with your father. And of course, the desire to want to hurt somebody, and of course that takes anger, malice, hatred, takes wrath, it takes all these spirits. So who are they really serving? And they answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Yahweh saith unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. And there we see they weren't truly his seed. The spirit, the word of the spirit was not in them. Because they were walking around as if they're keeping the law. But they desired a man to die. Malice. Guile. These are not the works and the fruits of the spirit. And we know Abraham kept the law, statutes, judgments, and obeyed the voice of Ahayah. Genesis chapter 26 and 5 told us. That's right. 
And we know he walked in the fruits of the Spirit because Jubilees chapter 17, what is it? I think it's verse 18 and 19, tells us how he was patient in all his trials and was not uh, indignant in any matter. And we, we read it before about how he was very um, um, hospitable right. to all those that passed by and taught them about Allah Hayyam. So it's admonished for us to be true children of Abraham, to do the works of Abraham our father. And also for those Gentiles who are seeking to partake in the faith of faith for Abraham, to operate in the faith of Abraham and do the works of our father. <laughs> so in continuing... Let's see what it takes to be a true Israelite. Now, let's look back at the prophecy in Genesis chapter 15, verse 13. Look at the precepts, um, Genesis 15 and 13. Um, you can read that verse again, please. Yes, Genesis chapter 15, verse 13. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger and a lamb that's not there, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. All right, in verse 14. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterwards shall they come out with great substance. Uh, we we'll continue, since we see that the grace, we left with the great substance at that time, just like the prophecy said, that now... We're in the end of the world here where this prophecy is going to be fulfilled again and it's going to be fulfilled in its entirety. You go to Jeremiah chapter 23, please. You want to continue? Please. Go to verse 4. Okay. Verse 3. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries whither I have driven them and will bring them again to their folds and they shall be fruitful and increase. And there we see that remnant is touching again on the remnant that shall be saved. Right. He's going to bring them out from all countries and they're going to be fruitful. That's right. We have to understand everything is in carnal. To be fruitful, you're going to be bearing the fruits. That's right. And increase. Because he said in Yache, he said, some receive the seed on the honest and good heart and keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. Right. Some, and then he said that some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, they're going to abound. And good works continue and of course it also goes into the hermits when they all had the vines mm -hmm. some of the vines were withered some right. of them had green and then some of them right. were, were goodly but they had no fruit right the, so, and the vines was the law right right the vines right. were the law and then the fruit of the spirits was the fruit that came from it right and there right. wasn't many that had fruit that's true right we'll have to do a teaching on the rods of the law and the fruit that we have to bring forth in the faith to attain unto the kingdom let's pick back up at jeremiah uh 23 actually let's pause right there we'll, we'll pause it then then come back yeah i apologize that's okay then we'll be encouraged with this and we're going to pause it here we're going to pick back up and finish up with understanding how this uh the prophecy of the 400 years is going to happen again it is happening again in this time the israelites are being delivered from their captivity from the nation that are uh, subjugating them all right we'll convene back with you shortly ahaya willing ahaya be magnified i be magnified HRC, 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 HRC,